Now we're ready to start working on the main roof of the lighthouse and as you can see I've got two pieces here in front of me. They started out as the two main roof pieces which were five and seven eighths by eight and a half. And I've done a little cutting already and let me explain to you what I did. This is the piece that is going to go facing the entrance side of the building and I've measured in and cut a notch to go around the entrance and it is two and one eighths inch tall and three and one eighths inches wide. And to get that three and one eighth centered, I just put my centering ruler here so that zero is in the center and I measured out an inch and a half plus a sixteenth on either side of zero and that will give the three and one eighths inch wide and then come up with two and one eighth inches. And then on the side that's by the tower, we have to do a few additional cuts because of trying to work around the octagonal tower. We're going to start out by just drawing a line that is an inch and a half long and it is up three and a half inches from the bottom edge of the uh, piece of roof. So it's an inch and a half long, three and one half inches up. Again, you would do that by putting your centering ruler on here. And since we want an inch and a half, we'll measure three quarters on either side of zero and that will give us our inch and a half. Now, again, uh, our tower is a three and one eighth inch opening, so we'll measure for that just like we did on the entrance by putting in zero and measuring an inch and a half plus a sixteenth on either side of zero. And then to see how long these vertical lines are, we're going to measure up two and five eighths inches, two and five eighths inches. And then at that point, we'll connect that dot with our inch and a half point up here and connect that and then that will be our cut. So I would say when you cut any of these on the th three, the vertical cuts here, you could cut them on slightly outside of your line or you could cut them on the line and then see if you need to widen this a little bit. Our building, our building pieces should be three and one eighths, but of course they have patterned paper on them, which will add a little bit to the dimension. So you may have to um, widen them a little bit. The other thing that you could do if you're concerned, will these cuts fit, is to preliminary cut this out of some heavyweight cardstock or lightweight chipboard and test fit, and you could do that. Now I also have some additional notches up here on all four of the upper corners. This is to allow for the chimney and right now I'm just marking them. I have them marked in at three quarters of an inch wide and an inch and three eighths tall. Three quarter by one and three eighths. I'm actually going to turn in and mark that on the inside because before I um, cut those out, I'm going to test that that is where we want to cut for the chimney. So I'm going to put these pieces together temporarily with some uh, temporary tape and then we'll be back to do a dry fit. Okay, you can see I've put my two pieces together with some of my blue tape and I have marked for my chimneys on the inside here. And so now we're ready to dry fit this onto the lighthouse. And if it's too tight when you go to maneuver around either of these sections, don't force it, just take it, take it off and remove a little sliver uh, from each side. Now, you kind of have to guess where center is since we've removed this section of our of our sides but if you get them even on uh, left and right here it's you should have the same amount of overhang on each side here and then once we do that 
what we want to do is check up here at the top and see if our marks, it's a little hard to see in this light, see if our light marks for our chimney are equal with the point here of where that opening is. So the whole point here is to remove these sections so that our chimney, of course, can continue up through the roof. Now I'm just checking to see my, my fit here. Is everything uh, fitting around, around the tower the way I want it to? Checking both sides here. And everything looks good. So what I'm going to do now is take the roof off, go ahead and cut these notches, and then come back and talk about pattern paper. Before we add our pattern paper to the roof pieces, I want to finish off uh, several of the edges here. Now, this is an optional step. You could just ink the edges and let the raw chipboard show, but I'm going to use some finishing strips, which are cut just like uh, cardstock joining strips. They're three quarters of an inch wide, score down the middle, and I uh, have quarter inch score tape on each side of the fold. The only difference is they are folded with the score tape to the inside. So the edges that I want to finish are this one, these four, and the same four on this other piece. And when I do that, I want to make sure that I start by, with the 3 eighths of an inch side, I'm working on the inside. You can see I've marked outside on two pieces because there's an overhang of a quarter of an inch. And so if we start on the inside, we'll make sure that this is captured and our overhang will be nicely finished as well. So I'm going to do that on uh, both pieces and then I'll be back to talk about the pattern paper. So you can see I have the edges wrapped that we talked about before and now I'm ready to put my pattern paper on. I've cut two pieces that fit onto uh, each side of the roof. They may be a hair shorter than the, the, the roof sides just so that they're not hanging over. And then I've inked the edges. And also, hopefully the camera is picking this up. There, the lines that you see here, I scored the paper every half inch and then I just with a very light touch took um, my light colored distress ink just to highlight those and that's to give it that look of the the metal roof um, without detracting from the paper itself so the way I'm going to attach this is on the paper, on the back side of the paper, will go around all edges. And then here, on the chipboard, will go around the cut openings. We don't have to go along the top because the paper tape will take care of that. And then I'm going to cut the shape out exactly around the two large openings, but then I'm going to wrap to the corners for the chimney. So I'll uh, get one to that point and I'll show you what that looks like. So I've attached the paper to uh, the tower side of the roof and here I think you can see I've wrapped this corner. Here it is wrapped to the back. And how I did that was we already have some score tape on the edges there. So I just added another little teeny piece here so that this entire little square of pattern paper has score tape on it. And then I'll just come at a 45 degree angle from that corner right there. I'm just going to cut these edges back a little bit. And then 
I don't need to wrap this entire thing, so I'm just kind of cutting out a little piece there. So that's what I have going on. And now I can just take, take that and wrap it to the inside here. You just do a little inking to finish that corner off. So there's the tower side. Now for the, oops, there's one other thing I wanted to say to do, and that is on the inside of these edges here, mark a line that is a quarter of an inch back from the edge on either of these sides, or both of these sides. That'll help you get the uh, roof aligned straight on top of the building. Now for the entrance side, I've added some extra score tape on here because there's a, another roof piece that will come up into here. I didn't do all this extra score tape on the tower side. I just put some uh, lightweight adhesive like ATG on here so that because um, uh, there wasn't any need for heavy duty score tape over the roof. Uh, like there is on the entrance side. So other than that, I'm going to repeat the same process and get the entrance side covered and then I'll be back. So now I have both roofs covered with the pattern paper and I'm ready to join them together and I'll just flip them over to the back side here and use one of our cardstock joining strips to do that. Give that a good burnish. Then I'll bring the building in here. Now, on the tower side, I've added some joining strips here down at the top edge of the side walls and here along the top angled wall. And I've also put some here on the angled wall on the entrance side. I haven't put any on this side. We're going to glue um, on this entrance wall side because we won't be able to reach in there to fasten them. So I'm just going to do a dry fit here and we'll talk about how this is going to go on. We'll go ahead and Put both sides down and then we're actually ready to do this we'll go ahead and remove our score tape backing and then we'll make sure that we have it seated properly and you'll know if it's seated properly because these edges will line up with the size of your chimney openings and then when we go to join it remember we drew this quarter inch line on the side here. We'll use that to line up with the outside edge of our wall on both sides. So how we'll do this is, like I said, remove all the score tape backing and then having the house in the building in this position, we can reach in and secure the tower sides and then remove this score tape from this side put some little glue here and here and then we can finish fastening it down you'll be able to to secure these on the entrance side you'll be able to reach in through the chimney hole and get to them so let's do that so I have all of my uh, backings removed from the score tape here and I'm just kind of pressing them down so nothing will engage prematurely and now we'll go ahead and
put the roof on. Focusing first on this tower side and I've got it down so now I'm going to lift up the entrance side and make sure that the tower side is staying put. And now I can reach in here and make sure my roof is lined up with the line I drew. Then I can engage that score tape. And then I'll reach in here and get the ones next to the edge of the roof. give all of those a good burnish. So now that we have the tower side completed, I'll go ahead and run a bead of glue along this edge and this edge and then I can reach in from the inside of the chimneys to secure these tabs. Then I'll just put a little pressure on these front, the front part of the roof here where I've got my thumbs and hold that for a few minutes and let that set up and dry. Now for the entrance roof, we have our two entrance main roof pieces and what we want to do is measure over on the bottom two and a half inches, two and a half inches, and then we'll connect that with the top corner here and cut that triangle off. And of course repeat that on this one. Now when the roof goes in, this is the front edge here and this is the bottom edge here. And we want to wrap these two edges just like we did uh, the wrapping on our main roof. So this edge here and here. And remember to make a, a mirror image so that when you cut uh, this one, your triangle will go this way and you will wrap this edge and this edge so that, in fact, let me just mark and cut that triangle so there's no question about it. So the roof will get hinged here. So now you can see these will be the front edges and these will be the bottom edges. 
these two edges will go against uh, the main roof when it goes on like this. So I'm going to get those um, pieces prepped and then I will cut pattern paper. The pattern paper can be just the size of this. I'm going to use the same paper I think that I did for the main roof and treat it the same. So I'll be back when I've got that accomplished. I just want to say before I start this process that I'm using directional paper and so when I have the roof oriented like this I've drawn two arrows here that show which direction is the bottom so that as I'm moving these pieces around I keep in mind which way to put my directional paper. So I have my entrance roof piece, uh, pieces covered with pattern paper and I've added a hinge here in the center and when we go to put this on we're just going to use glue to get it in the right place but we want to make sure we know where we're going before we start in with our glue and what I want to do is find the central center point across the roof here and I'm going to to try a point that's about five eighths of an inch down from that uh, from the from the ridge to and mark a point there so I'm finding my center and I'm coming five eighths of an inch down just making a little tiny dot there. Now, I want to take my roof and put it on and see mine is mine come mine fits nicely, I think you can see there and going to that 5/8 inch mark and then if I put my level on, that's very very good there too. So, I've got my point here that I know where the roof is going to go and then I'm going to mark two little dots on either corner here and here you could also use a corner of a post-it the dots aren't showing up very I don't think too much so what are, what are we going to put glue on? We're going to put glue on the two angled edges of the roof and then these edges of the entrance. So all of four of these edges and then the angled edges of the roof. So I have my glue on all of my edges. I'm going in for that top point and keeping an eye on my side points. And then I'll just hold everything with good pressure once I have it where I want just hold it there for a few minutes to make sure that that glue is nice and set up. 